Discover how China's ambitious skyscraper plans are facing a dramatic setback due to new government height limits. The dream of towering over skylines with next-generation megastructures could be grounded, leaving developers struggling in a debt crisis. The impact ripples through the real estate market, local governments, and financial stability. Tune in to learn why China's skyward ambitions are hitting a ceiling and what this means for the future of urban development. Uncover the challenges behind the scenes of China's skyscraper dilemma reaching for the sky held by the ground. This is a $500 billion twist you won't want to miss, thanks to a new government-imposed height limit that makes such projects more challenging for developers already fighting to survive a debt crisis. Plans for a new generation of skyscrapers that would soar over the skylines of Chinese cities may fall back to earth. The situation may compel strapped-for-cash developers to essentially start over on some structures or sell projects that have already begun construction at steep discounts, further reducing their liquidity. According to a document released on July 12 by the National Development and Reform Commission, the nation's main planning organization, new structures taller than 500 meters will no longer be allowed and towers over 250 meters will be rigorously prohibited. The commission further stated that buildings taller than 100 meters had to precisely fit the size and fire rescue capabilities of their surroundings, despite a slower than anticipated economic recovery and a dip in the country's real estate market. Governments in China have seen a worrying fall in their holdings after years of tremendous economic expansion. At a meeting last month, China's Politburo, the seat of power inside the Communist Party, for the first time declared that a comprehensive solution to local government debt was required to address the risks associated with local government debt, according to a research note published by Fitch Ratings on August 6. The declaration demonstrates the central government's enhanced attention to the financial challenges faced by less developed regions, as well as preventing systemic concerns. Fears of a public default on debt repayment sold by local government financing vehicles LGV hybrid entities that are both public and private and that have proliferated since the 2008 global financial crisis and were developed to get around. Restrictions on local government borrowing have grown since the beginning of this year. Special exceptions may still be made if a small city truly needs a new skyscraper, but they must not exceed 250 meters. Similarly to that, a larger city might go higher if it has a strong argument. But if it wants to go past 500 meters, forget it. There will never again be Shanghai Towers or Ping and Finance Centers, even after the 100M mark. New regulations must be followed. Buildings must adhere to specified fire safety and seismic performance standards to rise higher than that. Therefore, why is the question? China was surviving just fine before, wasn't it? Didn't the skyscraper boom it had in the 1980s enable it to reach the incredible rates of development it now experiences? Some analysts kind of predicted these new steps, so not everyone was that surprised by them. I'm not at all surprised that those new regulations were implemented, says Dr. Fei Chen, a senior lecturer at the University of Liverpool School of Architecture who specializes in urban design and public space. China's government has started to pay more attention to the building quality as well as the characteristics of Chinese cities in the past few years. The truly extreme scenarios are also possible. Major issues with the construction of some skyscrapers like Golden Finance 117, which is a tale we've already shared on this channel, have left some cities with buildings that are only partially completed. Then there are the environmental factors, which include the additional stress they can put on a city's transportation system, as well as factors like high wind pressures and the urban heat island effect that many skyscrapers create surrounding them. The social implications of all those buildings are also a reason for concern, as Chinese cities still have a lengthy history.
falters, local governments grapple with dwindling assets. The unprecedented move reflects heightened concerns over financial risks and regional disparities. Amid fears of public debt defaults, hybrid financing entities are under scrutiny. This pivotal moment underscores China's shift towards meticulous building, quality, environmental consciousness, and respect for its architectural history.